first thing you're going to want to do is download Visual Studio Code. It's a free download from code.visualstudio.com. It is a cross-platform uh, code editor with lots of extensions and integration with Git and debugging and it can also host uh, Windows PowerShell. So once you've downloaded that you'll also want to download my ATEM uh, library for the Blackmagic switcher. Uh, so you can download that from the web. And when you do download it, I suggest getting the latest version after you've downloaded it and I would store it in my Windows PowerShell directory that you right click on the DLL. Check the properties that it doesn't have a unblock button. If it does, click the button to unblock the DLL, that way you'll be able to use it. So once you've downloaded that, you can then start up Visual Studio Code, which is an awesome editor, and it's uh, kind of based on project folders. So you can open a folder, and that would be the folder that has all your scripts in it, so I've created that under my PowerShell directory. Once you've opened a folder, you can create a new file, atem.ps1 for a PowerShell script. And that has opened up the PowerShell integrated console because VS Code detected that we're working inside a PowerShell file. Now in the PowerShell host down the bottom here we can run PowerShell commands which are based on noun and noun verb commands. So I can do something like get hyphen process and that lists all the processes running on my computer. Uh, but I can also type commands into the editor and it's got autocomplete as you see so tab will give me that and then I can run a command simply by putting the cursor on the line and pressing F8 which will run the command so one of the things we can do is get registry key information so here you can see I'm selecting a path from the registry and when I run that command it returns a whole lot of information that Blackmagic store in the registry. Uh, one of the particularly useful things in there is the IP address. So now we'll move on and use uh, another feature of PowerShell which is to store this as an object so I can create any object I want in PowerShell, so we'll call this the ATEM IP. We'll assign it to the registry key, but we actually want to get an individual property out of this registry key. So we wrap that in brackets, and then we specify the key we want, which is going to be the IP address. So now when I run this command, I now have an object. You might think it's a variable, and traditionally in scripting it would be a variable. So I can highlight just that, and it returns for me the IP address. But if we have a look at this ATEM object, ATEM IP, and we pipe that to a command called get member, it will tell me all the things I can uh, that it knows about this object. So you can see here this object has a a lot of methods. I can convert the object to a, a string or to other formats if that was valid. I can get the length of the string. I can perform string operations uh, on this object as well. But now we have our our ATEM IP address. Uh, it would be useful to now connect to the ATEM. So what we want to do is load the um, DLL that I created to control the ATEM. 
So to do that we need to load it in. So we're going to use this command called add type which will load in the, the .NET assembly that I created to control the ATEM. We specify the path and it's going to be from my C colon users backslash documents. As you can see I'm using the type ahead very quickly. find my switcher lib DLL. So I can run that command and that's now loaded that in so now I can create an object. So we'll call this our ATM object. It's going to be a new object. And it is switcher lib dot switcher. And we need to pass in this the IP address that we want to connect to. Which is our ATM IP. And we can run that command. And now we need to connect to the ATM. you'll see there's a number of things you can do on this ATEM object but we're just going to connect which is a method so it needs brackets and now press F8 run that command and now I have the ATEM as an object so because it's an object I can find out all the things I can do to it so my ATEM I'm going to pipe that to my get member command, run that command and you'll see all the different things uh, that I can do. So as well as connecting, I can check the status and get information about audio, DSKs, the headphones, hyperdex inputs, the various upstream keys, macros, media players, uh, all sorts of things, the multi-view settings, the still clips, serial ports, the super source, uh, so lots of things we can now do. That uh, This is the benefit of the switch lib as it turns the ATM into an object and then we can do lots of things with it. So the first thing we want to do is uh, get the mix effects unit. So for the ATM object uh, you'll see that we can get EMEs. So it will get me however many or an, uh, a collection of the mixer effects units that exist in the ATEM that I'm connected to. So I'm going to save this as a variable or as an object for the um, EMEs. And we'll run that. So now I have EMEs. If we run that, you'll see it tells me all the information. I only have one ME in my television studio HD. It tells me the current information about that ME, what the program preview inputs are, all the different parameters that you've got for, a, for an ME. So that's my ME's. What I now want to do is uh, create an object for ME1 because I might have multiple ME's and what that will be is my dollar emes and we want the first one now how i know this is what i want is if i had emes dot count and press f8 it tells me that i have one eme if i was on a, a two eme switcher it would tell me there were two uh, and Although the count is one, um, you're always referring to a collection of uh, objects starting from zero. So 
ME1 now is the object that controls the ME and now I have a whole bunch of other things I can do on that individual ME so you can see here all the different settings I have for the ME and the commands I can do so I can uh, do something like cut and I'll just turn on the ME so you can see that so now if we run this command we'll see that it's cutting between the inputs uh, so we can basically do anything we want we can set the me one dot preview and we can set that to or we can read out the preview value so press F8 and that will tell us it's currently on 7 uh, and now we can type the commands down the bottom directly into PowerShell so I can set the preview equals to 1 and you'll see the preview has changed So that's executing commands direct or I can type them up here and then press F8 to execute the command that the cursor's on. Let's do one last thing in the session and that's to do a loop so that we can switch each input and the preview bus of the ATM. So we want to do a, a for loop where our variable we're going to use i starting at zero um, and we want to keep the loop going and uh, while i is less than nine and each step of the loop we want to increment i by one and then we need our code block and we want to do the me one dot preview I want to set that to the value of i and then we need a little bit of a, a wait so that it stays on that preview for a short period of time so we'll start a loop sorry we're going to start a sleep and it defaults to seconds we can specify milliseconds but seconds will do fine for us so two milliseconds and now this is the advantage of typing the code in the editor as I can highlight several lines of code and I can press F8 and run that section of code so now you'll see the inputs on the preview bus looping through each one every two seconds <laughs>